This is just another short video to tie up a loose end. Uh, when we looked at Fourier series, we started with the example of a square wave. And we later saw the Dirichlet convergence theorem. And in the case of the square wave, that tells us that the Fourier series converges to the exact value of the square wave at every point where the square wave is continuous. So at all of these points. And at the jumps, the Fourier series cor um, converges to the midpoint of the jump. So that's great. We get really good convergence of the Fourier series. It converges exactly almost everywhere. But um, it may be a little bit surprising that we get such good convergence using uh, a sequence of continuous functions, a series of continuous functions, um, to add up to give us an approximation of a discontinuous function. And you may be wondering exactly how that uh, convergence occurs. And that's an important point. It involves what we call Gibbs phenomenon. Briefly, the issue is that the convergence is not what we call uniform convergence. And that means essentially that you have to pay attention to the order of quantifiers in statements about the convergence. What the Dirichlet convergence theorem says is that we do get convergence at every point where f of t is continuous. So at every point where f of t is continuous, the Fourier series does converge to the true value of the square wave. And to state that in the usual mathematical way, that means that for every t where the square wave is continuous, for every epsilon there exists a capital N such that the error that we get when we add up all the terms with indices that are less than or equal to N in absolute value, that gives us an error whose absolute value is less than epsilon. So in other words, for every t, for every point along the square wave, where the square wave is continuous, by taking a sufficient number of terms in our Fourier series, we can make the error in the approximation as small as we like. That's what it, what it means to say that the series converges at every such point t. But this is not the same as saying that for every epsilon, there exists an n such that the magnitude, the modulus of the error signal, is less than epsilon for every t, or for every t where the square wave is continuous. So in other words, if we want to make sure that the um, approximation, that the error in our approximation is less than epsilon for every point where the square wave is continuous, well, we may not be able to do that. In fact, we cannot do that if we're requiring that the epsilon be less than about 8.9%. So for this reason, we say that the convergence is not uniform. We can't choose a number of terms such that the corresponding partial sum gives us an error as small as we like everywhere along the square wave or for every point where the square wave is continuous. We just can't do that. And the reason is what's called Gibbs phenomenon. So to see what Gibbs phenomenon is, let's take another look at the convergence of the Fourier series to the square wave. So let's suppose that we're using the real sinusoidal form of the Fourier series for the square wave. We've already seen what you get when you take the fundamental and add the first five harmonics, if you like, the first five integer multiples of that fundamental, two, three, four, five, and six. Um, we already 
using only a relatively small number of terms, are starting to get what looks like a pretty nice approximation of the square wave. So this looks really good. But if you take more and more terms in your Fourier series, um, you see that indeed, as the Dirichlet convergence theorem says, uh, the series does converge at every point where the square wave is continuous, but there's also this phenomenon of this overshooting. It was maybe not very conspicuous with only five harmonics, but here we've taken 25 harmonics, and you can see that we still have a considerable overshoot on either side of the discontinuity. And in fact, it's because of this overshoot that we don't have uniform convergence. Here's the example where we have the first 125 harmonics. Now, the way this is drawn here, it looks as though we're getting pretty good convergence in the middle of these sort of plateaus in the plot of the square wave. But in the region of the discontinuities, we still see this overshooting. And in fact, it's been shown, and Gibbs wasn't the first to show this, but it, the phenomenon's named after him, that this overshoot, in each direction, the overshoot approaches about 8.9% of the height of the square wave. So you can't get rid of that overshoot. Let's say of the amplitude of the square wave. Um, I'll say the size of the square wave because it's actually, I suppose, what you might consider to be twice the amplitude. So as you take more and more terms, you can, in a sense, um, squash up this area in which you see the oscillations as much as you like, but you can never get rid of it. You will always have this overshoot and these oscillations, and the overshoot won't get any smaller than about 8.9% of this distance. So you do have convergence everywhere because you can always squash up these oscillations into as small a neighborhood of the discontinuity as you wish. And that, in fact, means that you get convergence everywhere where the square wave is continuous. But you don't get this uniform convergence. You can't, uh, for any given epsilon, find a capital N such that if you take all the terms with indices uh, little n less than or equal to capital N, the r resulting error is less than epsilon. You can only do that if your epsilon stays above, say, 9%. You start demanding better convergence and you see the effect of this non-uniformity. You can get as close as you like at any given point, but um, as your point gets closer and closer to the discontinuity, you have to take more and more terms in your, um, in your Fourier series approximation. And in fact, as your point approaches the discontinuity, the number of terms that you have to take tends to infinity. So the overall series does converge, just as Dirichlet predicts. So at every point where the square wave is continuous, you get exact convergence if you take an infinite number of terms. And at the discontinuities, your Fourier series converges to the midpoint. But with only a finite number of terms, you always have this overshoot of 8.9% or more, no matter how many terms you take. So again, we say mathematically that the convergence of the Fourier series is non-uniform. And this overshoot of about 8.9% is referred to as Gibbs phenomenon. And it's a reflection 
of that non-uniform convergence. So if you're actually using a finite number of terms of a Fourier series to approximate a, a function that has discontinuities, Gibbs phenomenon is something to be aware of. And that's the end of this brief video.